And to show you why this title is legit, I will start with some incidents. The first one, probably every one of you has already heard of, it, was 2015 in France, where a trick line weblog broke, and the backup failed, with the weblog ending up in the eyes of the trick liner, and he had severe injuries, which could easily have been fatal. Okay. Another one was in Chile, where a ratchet of a trick line came loose and ended up in the guy's back. He had to have it removed by surgery, had 90 stitches, 12 fractures, and he had to relearn how to walk. Then in South America, this was last year, we have a red log completely slipping through. The slack liner fell to the backup. And this year, in the Netherlands, at the safety meeting, a 140 meter PES high line. Um, which also slipped and the backup knot was loaded. This was last year in the USA, which was a tailwalk, just so you see what the tailwalk is, I don't know if everyone of you has already seen it, where the webbing twists and basically slips into the weblock and at a certain point the weblock will completely fail and the webbing will just slip out. This is the same thing happening in France last year, with the webbing being completely destroyed afterwards and the same thing also happens I don't know where exactly, but exactly the same scenario. As you have seen, this were all completely different weblogs. So webbing slippage happens in every weblog. This was the Alpine weblog, FlagFR weblog, EQB weblog. It happened in Lynx, Silas, every single weblog slips. And there are two different kinds of slippage. It can be this micro slippage, where just the webbing gets out of the weblog. And if you're unlucky and you have a twist and this tailwalk isn't used, then you can have even a complete failure of the weblock, rendering the weblock completely useless. So it even happens with one and a half and double wrap, but this is not this is not as uh, as bad as with a single wrap because the tailwalk doesn't happen that much. But still, the micro slippage of the webbing coming out of the weblock can happen. So right now, the weblocks that we can buy are not really sufficient in. The way that we use them, they don't really lock the webbing if we use them for low tension highlights. The two problems that we can solve with tie-offs are that the weblocks don't really lock the webbing. This one goes for a leash, so high lines, mid lines, water lines. So webbing slippage occurs, tail walk occurs, and the weblock is useless in the end. Another one can be that the anchors or the attachment structures fail, and this one will leave your anchor gear flying around. This is important in long lines and high tension, long lines, water lines, trick lines, and severe injuries are possible. So the solution for now is tie-offs. I'm saying for now because I'm hoping that in the future we will have better web blocks, which will prevent at least the slippage thing. And the other thing with attachment structures and anchors breaking, we can't really get rid of that, so that tie-off you should always do. So. Little side note, there are hundreds of tie-offs that are possible, that are safe. So I'm not trying to open up a discussion which is the best tie-off, the one only true tie-off, but I want to have a tie-off that is really simple, that every beginner can do, and that can prevent accidents in the future. So we need to find a tie-off that, that does its job, so not that is strong enough to be a backup. It has to be easy to tie, ideally also easy to check if you want to do it on highlights. And this one is in brackets, it should be releasable if you want to do it on your weblog and you think you will have slippage, you will have this scenario many times so you want it to be releasable and not every time have to try to open the knot. <coughs> so for medium to high tension systems without a leash, this can be a long line, a water line and also a beginner line, the tie off should simply prevent the gear from flying around and potentially hurting people. So this knot should basically just be able to hold these high loads, these shock loads that could come on it. It doesn't need to be releasable in my opinion, but this is just an opinion, because it will only be loaded in absolute worst case scenarios where anchor gear fails that you would normally not expect to fail. So I think if your anchor failed, so much has gone wrong that you're okay with the end of your webbing being stuck in a knot. We're just happy that the weblock didn't fly around. And possible, this is something Philip has pointed out to me, um, you should do this backup before you start tensioning. Because if you do a long line, for example, a long one, then 
you will have a lot of tension on the line and the tension will not really increase that much when you step on the line. So the highest load that your entire system will see will actually be during the tension part when you're yanking on your pulley system and creating small shock loads in the pulley system. So this is where many accidents happen. This one I'm calling backup tie-off. This is not set in stone, I just want to differentiate it in my presentation right now. So backup tie-off is for preventing gear from flying around, high tension systems. And this is the one that I want to be really easy for every beginner to do, so that they can use their ratchet systems or whatever systems in a safe way. So I have a few propositions. Also, these are not set in stone, I just try to come up with some simple knots. So this is a re-threaded figure of eight knot, which is strong and it's really easy to do. So the being easy to do part is the most important thing for me. This knot should always be above the sling so that when you bounce, you don't load the backup knot or you could also put it at the very bottom of the tree. This would be another advantage. If your anchor goes flying, then your gear will be sent down to the ground rather than along the line. Another option would be the double fisherman around the tree. You can cinch it, it doesn't slide down, it's also strong. It's another option, and just like a figure of eight, it's also not releasable. And the last one would be a water nut, simply a re-threaded overhand knot. So these knots are all not really sophisticated, they're just really simple knots that are strong, that do the job, and that should just prevent gear from flying around. So now we can advance to the safety relevant systems, low to medium tension. This would be a high line, mid line, water line, everything where you're walking in the leash. So this tie-off should prevent the webbing from slipping through the weblock and from inducing the tail walk, which can render your weblock useless. This one should re be releasable in my opinion, because it's not a worst case scenario. It can happen, it does happen all the time. And this one I call slippage tie-off. So I have a few thoughts on what the features of a good slippage tie-off should be. First of all, it should align the loose webbing end that's coming out of the weblock so that it doesn't have any twists and can bring twists inside the weblock, which then in the end would render the weblock useless. So if possible to do this, you should go through the back of your weblock. This is of course only possible if your weblock doesn't have really sharp edges which would cut your webbing. And it should also be, um, you should also be able to tie it reasonably tight so that your slippage can't occur, you have the tail walk and then your backup knot holds so you're slacklining on a knot, but instead it should catch the webbing at the very beginning of the slippage. And of course it should be releasable. And this is another point which is really hard to achieve, that it doesn't affect the backup tie-off, which you do behind the slippage tie-off, so that if your anchor were to fail, then your backup will basically be loaded between the slippage tie-off and the backup tie-off. So you also have to think about what happens if I pull on the other strand of my slippage tie-off the one that shouldn't be loaded. And of course it should work, it should load. So this is one proposal, I'm not saying this is perfect or this is even releasable, but it's just one way to do it and to illustrate how you go through the weblock. So you put a bite through the end of the weblock and then you pull it tight. So right now the webbing end coming out of the weblock is going around the weblock and nicely aligned and then you go back to the shackle or you can go back to the tree and do whatever knot you think you see fit. So in this case, just to demonstrate, I would wrap it around twice and then finish it off with an overhand knot in the end. And the idea is that the wraps take out the friction of the, of the tension and you can easily release the knot. That's what it look like, looks like in the end and you see this is really easy to do with a little slack, so if this starts to slip, it will immediately be caught by the backup and there's no possibility that any twists can enter the weblock. Another method, which was proposed by Jet on balance community, is the MMO method, which means you do a montage and you attach it to extra piece of gear and an extra string, sling that you attach to your anchor. Then you remove all the slack from your system and tie it off with a new knot and an overhand knot, which you then clip <laughs> to the same anchor. So this one is of course releasable and you can also pre-tension it so that the webbing is immediately caught. This would be another method to just wrap around the tree 
lots of times to reduce the friction coming out of the web lock. But of course, this is a lot of work, so this is maybe not suitable. And in this case, this was also, would also combine the slippage tie-off and the backup tie-off. So if now this thing breaks, this same time of tie-off would hold the web lock. Um, and the last point is really high tension systems, trick lines. Mm, there we need the tie-off additionally to the independent backup. Because as most of you know, trick lining is dangerous. There are insanely high tensions involved. And you want to have your ratchet backup. You want to have everything as bomba as possible. But still, the accident like it happened at natural games can only be prevented by tying off the webbing coming out of your trick line web lock or your ratchet. So to show this, I have a picture of a normal one inch web lock. This is where the web lock broke. So if I put any kind of backup here or here, still this part of the web lock would go flying if I don't tie back the webbing. So in the end, this tie off for the trick line should just simply have the maximum breaking strength retention for the webbing, in my opinion. And as we have learned, no fabric on fabric connections and only bomber connection pieces like checkers, for example. Yeah. So since I'm not a trick liner myself, I don't want to have a too strong opinion on this topic, but I think that's a separate discussion what backups you should do independent of the tie-off. And also it's really hard for us to come up with a knot that is really strong in in webbing without testing it. So here testing needs to be done to test which knot is the best to tie off your trick line. So now I would like to split you all up into a few workshops. Um, we will have a slippage tie-off outside and here we want to talk about the backup tie-off and in the next room we can talk about the trick line tie-off. And I thought of it that way that you stay at each station for five minutes. You discuss in small groups the tie-offs that you want to do write your ideas on a piece of paper and I also provided a link where you can upload pictures and then every five minutes we switch so that every person has a chance to get to every station and you can talk about it with each other. Yeah. Thanks for your attention.